let's call it 34 or 33 degrees Fahrenheit. If it's at that temperature, is water going to condense on that surface? What's the likelihood of water condensing? Well, to do that, we need to look at a psychrometric chart. And we need to first find our, um, our inside condition. So our inside condition, let's say it's 70 degrees Fahrenheit and 50% relative humidity. Okay, so here we are at 70 degrees Fahrenheit and 50% relative humidity. Okay? And we want to find out when that amount of, of moisture in the air is cooled off to 30, uh, 33 degrees Fahrenheit, which is over here, what, how much of, of the moisture is likely to condense out? Well, we can find that out by drawing a straight line to the saturation curve on the psychrometric chart. Now, that obviously is condensing at 50 degrees Fahrenheit, and we have a, a, a 34, a 33 degree Fahrenheit. Uh, so we we have a, a, we have the potential for condensation between 50 degrees and 33 degrees. But we also have the absolute humidity on the psychrometric chart of these two state points. And that difference is the amount of moisture that can condense out of, uh, in this case, a, a pound of, of dry air. So now you can figure out, well, how much leakage do we have into, uh, air leakage do we have into that assembly? And that can tell you how much moisture is likely to be delivered. Now, if you're really, really worried about condensation, you want to make sure that the temperature on that first condensing surface is warmer than the temperature that it is likely to condense at. And there are two ways you can do it. You can raise the temperature inside to something really uncomfortable. Let's, let's just say we, we set our, our temperature to 90 degrees inside, <laughs> and it's still 20 degrees outside. We find that our, so, so I drew, drew that line from 90 to 20. We've, we've got our foam in here. So our first condensing surface is still the sheathing. And now we still have uh, 40 degrees at that first condensing surface. So raising the temperature on the inside isn't everything we need to do. So then we know we, to be safe, we ought to probably add more R value to the outside of that wall uh, outside of that conde first condensing surface, um, and so let's let's just pretend we did, and we, we add another another, another R five, um, and now we're going to be back to our seventy degrees inside and 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 our our twenty degrees outside, and there we see that it crosses just below the fifty degrees mark. Of course. To do multiple calculations, it's a lot easier to use a spreadsheet than it is to do hand calculations or to draw repeatedly on graph paper. And so I've set up a spreadsheet so you can see how this is done. I have each, um, each element, each layer, labeled air film, sheetrock, insulation, sheathing, foam, which right now um, I've set to zero inches of foam, siding, and the outside air film. And then I've specified the thickness of each of these materials. Um, and in particular for the insulation materials, this is important because these ones are things that we might change. So in this case, for example, um, uh, we've got five and a half inches of insulation and zero inches of foam right now. Um, then I have an R value for each of these. Some of these are just given R values. And um, some of them are calculated. So if you look up in the formula bar, you'll see that I'm using an R value per inch for the insulation material and then multiplying that by the number of inches uh, of that material. So for instance, if we decided we wanted a really thick wall and we said we were going to have 11.5 um, uh, inches 
of, uh, um, of, of insulation, then we'd have an R40. Um, but we're going to stick with the, uh, the, the, the um, standard 2x6 uh, uh, framing. Um, now we also have, so then we have the R value, either given or calculated, and then we have the cumulative R. So this is the exact same table that we set up by hand, but now we're setting it up in the spreadsheet, and it's calculating the cumulative R value for us simply by adding the cell directly above each one as we go from inside to outside, inside air film all the way to the outside. Now here we can set the inside temperature, which as usual we've set at 70 degrees, and we have to set an outside temperature, where I, which I've set to 0 degrees, but we can set that, say, to 20 degrees, and it will recalculate things. Now, th this is the formula we're using. It's the same formula that we used by hand. In this case, the temperature outside means the outer surface of the layer that we're referring to, the temperature inside is always that inside temperature, This, this, uh, in this case, 70 degrees. Q is something we've calculated over here, which I'll show you in a second. That's, here's Q. And then the R value is the cumulative R value at each cell for each, you know, for each layer. So let's look at Q. Q is calculated um, the same way we did it by hand. We take the um, inside temperature minus the outside temperature, that's our delta T, divided by R. In this case, it's the total R value for the wall, which you'll notice is the same as the cumulative R value that you find at the outside of the outer air film. So we've now set up this equation here in each one of these cells. So for, for example, here at the insulation layer, um, the first insulation layer, um, we, we have the inside temperature, and that stays the same. And we have Q, that stays the same. And then all we're doing is multiplying uh, Q by the cumulative R value at the layer that we're, that, that we're interested in in this particular cell. And we simply set that up for each cell, just copied it down. So now it recalculates things for us. So let's say we decided that we're building in some place where the average low that we're worried about is uh, 14 degrees Fahrenheit. Well, it recalculates for us, and now we see that, okay, we have a 17 degrees at the outer layer of the insulation, which means that it's the first condensing surface of the sheathing is going to be 17 degrees Fahrenheit. So we might ask, say, well, wouldn't it be nice to ha have some foam on the outside to raise that first condensing layer temperature, let's add two inches of foam. That recalculates everything for us, and we see that we have um, a, it's a 33 degrees, um, which is considerably warmer, so a lot less moisture will condense there. Let's say that we didn't see it was safe enough, so we want to add four inches of foam. Now it's 42 degrees, pretty unlikely to be condensing very much moisture at all. Um, so that, that's the sort of calculation we can do with this, uh, with this approach. And it kind of draw, it get, draws a nice temperature profile through a wall. And you can see the different temperatures at the different, uh, the different uh, condensing, uh, possible condensing surfaces. And you can see the outside temperature, and you can change it to uh, whatever you might like.